a first for India and Indian company law, the Companies Act 2013 relies heavily on rules to convey the full import of the change in law. Most of the draft rules are now in the public domain for you to read and mull over. Or you can just watch this special edition of the firm because today we have a multidisciplinary panel here to take you through the many surprises that these rules have thrown up. I am joined by Narayan Shankar, Vice President and Company Secretary at m and Yogesh Sharma, Audit Partner Grant Thornton, Manan Lahoti, his corporate lawyer and partner at Luth and Vivek Gupta, who's the m and head and partner at BMR. Gentlemen, to all four of you, a very warm welcome. The first issue I want to start with are two definitions that cut across the Act and impact all stakeholders. The first one is the definition of relative, the list of people that qualify as relatives under this Act and these rules is far shorter than what the 1956 Act had and that should have made you happy. Instead, most of you are fairly perturbed by this definition. Why? Today, if you see the Companies Act 1956, uh, uh, nuclear family was not there. It was more joint family was invoked. Today, with nuclear family, the whole concept of relative today, whether in terms of independent directors, directors or auditors, there are huge responsibilities cast and today with the 15 list, 15 type of relatives but which are. It's have still made. fairly close, right? It's your parents, it's your husband no, it or goes wife. It goes two generations It's your children it goes two and your son's down. children, that's it. So you'll have to see it yeah. from the perspective of is the concerned director able to exercise influence or control any one of those relatives? So ideally, the suggestion would be to get into. Uh, instead of getting it into a prescriptive mode, you can just define it as dependent parents or dependent children who are dependent on the concerned director or a KMP or you have a concept of an immediate relative or you just say people who are financially dependent on the director. Okay. It becomes I, much more easier. I, I thought the list was fairly close. It says spouse, father, father's parents, mother, mother's parents, children, sons, children, not daughters, children. And brother, including stepbrother. I don't know. Do all of you agree with what Narayan is saying that this list is not good enough, that it casts too wide a net? No, it sir. depends. Um, I mean, it would depend on where the term relative has actually been used. So, how does it impact auditor? So, for example, let's say auditor gets disqualified to be an auditor if his relative has performed certain acts, entered into certain transactions, or bought certain securities worth, let's say, one lakh rupee face value. I of just the company that you intend absolutely, to audit. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Just taking a very simple example. Let's say I have a estranged, uh, financially independent elder brother right. who has his own business. He cannot enter into and should not have an indebtedness of a lakh rupee or more uh, with the company that you to which I am going to. And not only the company, it's the holding company of that company, a subsidiary company of that company, associated company of that company. But is that too much to ask for? I mean, honestly, you know, Vivek, I know you're going to object to it. Sorry, is that too much to ask for that if Yogesh is the auditor to a company, Yogesh's immediate relatives, his brother, his sister, his parents or his children must not have a financial relationship with that company? So conceptually, that is right. So I think the good part about this new definition is that my, the daughter-in-law of my sister-in-law is not included. Uh, <laughs> the problem is that this definition has universally been applied to all, all situations. So I'm, I'm all for it if you say that in terms of disclosure of transactions with, of the company with re related parties, you have a very extensive list. The, where I start having a problem is if you tell me to ensure that two generations above, two generations below, or on people who have no direct control, they should not have shares worth more than one lakh rupees. So let's say today I have to audit ICICI Bank. If any one of my of my so-called relatives in this definition of 15 hold shares with face value of more than one lakh, I cannot audit ICICI Bank. That cannot be the intent uh, of, of this section. So, in, in a variety of situations, different definitions are required. I get it. So, uh, what you're saying is that the long list works uh, if it only pertains to additional disclosures. But the moment you start using the list to make restrictions on what can or cannot be done, then it becomes too long a list in that sense. And I you would even argue it's difficult to administer. Even for capital market transactions, to make disclosures for this whole host of relatives, it's just not practical at all. A number of situations in India where, like he said, you know, the brothers may not speak to brothers. The information will not be available. One, so which I quite like, you know, by comparison, of course, I quite like the definition that SEBI uses for relatives. 
much shorter. How it is, is it different? So it basically includes the parents, it includes the siblings, it includes the children of of the person also of the spouse. It's still larger than probably but what it's it should same. be. It's the same. It's exactly it's, the same. It's parents, more than that. siblings. Slightly more than that. It's parents, it goes, siblings, it goes children. Up two level, and it goes down two level. You know, and children has children. to be in the context of the provision you are discussing. If you are discussing independence, it has to be based on financial de dependence. If it's for related party, then it's a different matter. It, exactly. it, it has to be based on the context you are trying to get into. Okay, it, it, all right. But I get the broad gist of what you all are trying to say. I want to move to the second definition that again, uh, you know, uh, has has many people irked, and that is the definition of related party. And Narayan, I think you are saying that again, it casts the net too. Why? Related party today currently is not defined under the Act. Related party is defined under the accounting standard and they broadly fall into two buckets. One where you can exercise control and the second where you can exercise significant influence. Hmm. Today under the Companies Act they have defined related 2013, the new so one. The rules have defined re related parties. Related parties and the, wide, the net has widened beyond imagination. For example, uh, a director or a KMP of your company is fine, but if you're saying a director or a key managerial personnel of your holding company, of your subsidiary, of your associate, and relatives of those people are all going to be related parties where you can't have a single transaction with them. Not only that, even key managerial people and their relatives of the Holco subsidiary associates. If you, just for example, if I can give, suppose a company has say 100 subsidiaries and 10 related party, 10 KMPs and directors all put together and even if they have 10 out of the 15 relations alive, so you are talking about 10,000 people who have to be tracked across. But given the abuse we've seen of related party transactions in this country, isn't it fair that they've expanded the net? Again, if it was no? for the purpose of disclosure, it's fine. But if you're going to it's, doing, it's going to be restrictive. But it is disclosure. It's not restrictive. Right? It's restrictive because you can't enter into a transaction with either any of the related parties without board approval, without board approval or and special resolution, special resolution. Depending on what kind of company. And you the penal provisions are, uh, you can say, very onerous. In case inadvertently, if a director, even if a relative enters into a transaction, a the independent director will be disqualified as being an independent, and b. If it is a related party transaction and if the director concerned would not even be aware that a transaction, he has to compensate the company and approval has to be taken within three months. You would not even be aware that a particular transaction has been actually taking place okay. in one so form. I, get of point. I have a slightly different problem really. I think um, the accounting standard definition of related parties has to be the same as the company's act. It can't be different. It should not be different because for companies, uh, companies act for the first time they've introduced a definition of related party, and this is slightly different from the one that I've seen under the accounting standard 18. That's what Nayan pointed out. Yeah. Right, but the problem it creates for a capital market transaction is we need to we need to give disclosures of all related party transactions. Till now, we used to align the disclosures to what was there in the account. Accounting standards. Now, now you, you have, have two, two sets. definitions. That's to right. Work. Two sets, in, and this one is very viable. Right? This plagues us with several definitions that are common across several acts. Whether it's That's things right. like control, which is more complex, or it's things like you know related party, which is simpler and should have been stuck to it. Or even KMPs for that matter. Yeah. Key management yeah. personnel. Yeah. Or or and rules provide even functional heads to be uh, the related parties. Now, yeah. functional yeah. heads could be anyone. Functional yeah. head is a purchase head, your sales head, R&D head, whether the function is relevant to the company or it may not be so relevant. But the functional heads are, co are covered with, without any definition for functional heads. So, it's got to gotta be wait and see how functional heads is going to get defined and, and interpreted. I get it. All right. Uh, the third definition I wanted to bring in, and it's not strictly a definition, but I'll bring it in nonetheless. And Yogesh, this impacts your fraternity, the issue of what constitutes a business relationship. Because it says that you cannot be an auditor to a company if you have a business relationship with that company. And then it goes on to elaborate that that means any transaction entered into for a commercial purpose. Uh, now, what commercial purpose means is a big question mark and that, and that again precludes you from let's say auditing a company like for instance Vodafone if you have a Vodafone service on your phone, is it? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a major challenge for and in, in case like, I mean, yet to look. Yet my to example see. was extreme. I don't think that the, uh, <laughs> that the Ministry for Corporate Affairs is going to look at it that way. But I'm just wondering, is that how you're reading it? But the theoretical reading of the rule is exactly the same. As extreme. So it's transaction of any commercial purpose. So uh, it could be anything. Now I'm a Tata Power user uh, and probably disqualified for being appointed as an auditor for Tata Power. 
So it's it's gonna create a challenge. <laughs> I'm sorry, I uh, want to laugh, but uh, <laughs> no, I, I, m m maybe an it extreme. It sounds absurd. It is extreme. E extreme yeah. interpretation, but intent is right. So you again, it goes back to uh, the basic fundamentals that auditor has to be independent of the company. Yeah. Point is, what is that which should be disqualified from a transaction coverage perspective from a, a for it, for making auditor an independent party? Now, uh, a transaction which has been entered at arm's length which is there in the related party transaction approval as well and I think those definitions and those concepts have to be applied even so they should have put arm's length into absolutely. that and if the moment they put arm's length into that then you'd be clear of at least not having to disconnect your power supply or change your service provider absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay, fine. All right. Absolutely. Materiality thresholds also in, in the act, right? Yeah, I get it. Holding one lakh rupees worth of shares of Infosys, coming back face to my value. Uh, face value, yeah. yeah, coming back to my favorite example, or Mahindra and Mahindra, is not going to give you any influence on those companies. Trust me. So there has to be some materiality threshold, which is perhaps even defined with reference to the company in question. The compliance costs for these companies also must be seen. Uh, so while rulemaking is a good thing, in principle, I agree with you. In principle, I think we are headed down the right track. Related parties should be disclosed. People who have abused the system should not be allowed to abuse the system. But in, in doing all of this, you can't take such extreme steps. The pendulum cannot completely sw swing to the extent it has.